Oh, well. But what happened? Is that the... Oh. What's going on? Oh. We, we just fell out of the sky, I guess. It's amazing that you two landed together, honestly. Yeah, I guess you missed your chance. Such a value mem valued member of the team there. Absolutely not. Who else is going to deal with the metal crawlers? Never, ever forget you. Well, what now? Oh, yeah, another person who sacrificed himself. Absolutely. We saved the world. Should have something to be happy about. Oh! He exploded into... Explody Snow! Hooray! And that concludes The Secret of Mana after nearly two months, or two and a half months there. Uh, let's watch the credits roll. I'll go ahead and give a brief review. I won't touch on everything, just some minor comments. Uh, just the sound. I don't have any complaints about the sound. Uh, only thing I really look for there is to make sure everything matches. So if something explodes into water, it sounded like water. If you go into a door, it kind of sounds like a door. And stuff like that. So no real complaints there to note about. Uh, the music in this game is wonderful. A lot of the songs in here are catchy. I like how they had the upbeat music in the towns to let you know everything was going well. And if towns were in trouble, like uh, Kakara or Pandora, they had the troubled music tone, or the more somber music, to let you know something was going on there. And they even, after you finished their problems, it reverted back to the cheerful music, so that's pretty cool. Scorpion army doing up here. Huh. How'd you get up there? Huh. Well, whatever. Uh, the final boss music is just awesome. I love the uh, tune with the mana beast there, although you don't get to listen to it all that long. Uh, just a lot of awesome songs come from this game, like you heard me mention the. Please jump off of that. Uh, you heard me mentioning about the Grand Palace there. It's one of my favorite songs in the game. And, of course, the most memorable music, in my opinion, is the Dark Lich song there. That song is awesome. One of my more favorite video game songs that I can think of. And if I had to pick a least favorite, I would probably go with the Crystal Forest there when we were going through all that snow area. Uh, not that I really despise the song, because it actually fit the area very well. I probably complained about it a little in the LP there. But I can't complain too much as, well, like I said, it does fit the scene, so. Um, going over controls, they were well done. I honestly never really memorized the... <laughs> Evil scary chairs! I was wondering if we'd see those again. But yeah, I never really memorized the ring menu. I mean, it's only four menus, but I just never got the hang of it for some reason. I just... Well, it doesn't really matter. There's only four. Uh, the controls otherwise are pretty responsive and clear-cut, and it's just more my incompetence of not being able to navigate a ring menu, which is pretty stable for uh, mana games there. And the gameplay. There is so much to go through. I won't go over everything I think about the game. Uh, just a few thoughts. I enjoyed all the different weapon options it gives you. It adds a little bit to the replayability of the game. Uh, not that the storyline doesn't give you enough reason to replay it. Just being fun overall. But you can go through the game with the sword. You saw me rotating weapons a lot. It just adds to the... A uniqueness of the playthrough, and you're not going through chopping everything with the same exact weapon every time. Uh, some are a little more tedious, like I said, like the bow and the polearm, but even they have their uses with ballooning enemies, uh, slowing things down, or putting them to sleep.
sleep, etc., etc., stuff like that, so. Um, I... What is... Oh, I thought we were in a different town. I say, what is Fauna doing back there? I generally, like you've noticed through the LP, have a little more fun using weapons for my primary offense as compared to uh, going through the game, which you can perfectly logically do with uh, magic and just completely destroy everything using magic, but you saw me go through the game with a sword, and I... One of the reasons I prefer to do it that way is because, well, it makes the boy play more of an active role as the hero there. Did the snow turn black? I could be something. But, uh, yeah, otherwise the sprite gets pretty much all of the action, and it puts the boy in the back seat, which I don't really care for. I have played it through that way a couple of times, and it's fun for the first few playthroughs, but it adds a minor additional challenge when you play through it with the weapons, even though after you get the moon energy, it's pretty easy from there on out. You didn't really see me struggle with a whole lot of the bosses there after that, so moon power is borderline uh, overpowering there. It's like four uses or whatever I had at the end there, four or five uses. So basically doing about, what, 5,000 damage to the Monobies before I had to reinitialize the moon energy there. After all that, we put it back. Fully charged and no more monsters. It's even got a self-destruct button on it now. Very nice. Yeah, the only real gripe about the spells is I didn't really get much of a chance to... Oh, to get a lot of use out of most of them. It gives you so many so quickly. Like, it really threw the final few temples at us very quickly, so you didn't really have time to grind if you didn't want to, like in my case. So a lot of things were probably left at level 1 or even level 0, like Lumina. I believe I don't think I ever got anywhere, and I don't think I ever got Shade anywhere either. I might have, but, but yeah, just too much, and I, well, I don't really want to grind, so I just went ahead, and it's perfectly beatable without doing that either, so... Um, the spells in themselves, uh, the sabers were awesome, but they're just, I just end up feeling like, well, what's the point after all that? I mean, it adds a little bit of damage, but I don't really want to recast it every couple of hits there, so I didn't worry about it, even with bosses, you saw me not really do much about that, so. Uh, let's see, what else? The offensive magic, I think they should have nerfed the smaller spells a little bit. Uh, you notice the uh, gem missile, if you spam that compared to Earth Slide, just for an example, most of them are like that. It just wasn't nearly as cost effective to cast Earth Slide. You wouldn't be doing nearly as much damage with the MP you had. But, well, whatever. Like I said, I didn't really use a whole lot of magic other than the moon energy. Like I said, is borderline abusive, but it speeds up otherwise lengthy boss battles. So I uh, just prefer to do it that way. They're not the boss battles aren't typically all that challenging in themselves. So I, I didn't feel it was justified to sit there and do 300 damage to something over and over and over. Uh, I really like the storyline, and I always have been curious about what happened to Fanha after we. Uh, where was it? The underground city where we... Or the Grand Palace that we saw him? Uh, you hear him yell, Thanatos, why? And he just disappears. I think that was right before the fight with the war machine. So I kind of wondered, was that Thanatos using some kind of magic to turn him into that? Or just... I don't know. Did he just kill him with magic? Or what happened? It's just... An unanswered question I never really understood the answer to. But you kind of understood that something was special about Thanatos, too, by the way. Even uh, at the beginning of the game, when you see him near the ruins, you kind of wonder you wonder what he was doing over there, and why he needed the people of the town. And it doesn't get answered till the very end of the game, which is very cool, in my opinion. You're kind of left wondering about Thanatos. I was Obviously, it really made it clear after the Grand Palace there who was in charge of all that after the death of Emperor Vondol there, but... 
uh, that's really all I have to say about it, or all I care to say at the moment. Uh, as far as bonus episodes go, I... I've been tossing around some of the ideas. I know I still miss the clip of when you separate the girl, or separate from the girl at Gaia's navel there, so I will eventually upload that video. I should honestly do it tonight. And I was also thinking about doing uh, spell specials and having all the upgraded weapons and showing off all of their charges. Uh, that would be just a fun video just for if you guys were curious just to show that off. Um, I think I briefly touched on it that the some of the spells at level 8 uh, have different animations for them. Uh, some are cooler than others, Fireball. But yeah, I think I'll probably end up doing that. I'm not sure if I'll get to it immediately after the end of this LP, but I'll get around to it eventually. So I suppose keep an eye out for that. I'm not going to show off all the additional equipment. Uh, obviously, I missed the Griffin Helm anyway, so I'm not going to go back and get that. It's not really worth it, in my opinion. It might be cool to show off, but meh. I don't really want to go back through all that, so... Well, that's pretty much it for Secret of Mana there. I hope you guys enjoyed this game. This is by far one of my favorite games to play for the Super Nintendo. I, God knows how many times I've played through this game. Love it every single time, uh, despite, or not despite, but uh, even playing through it differently every time. is just It just makes it so much fun. So I Hopefully you guys had just as much fun as I had making this. So. If you did, awesome. If you haven't played this game and this is the first video you're watching, wow, go find a way to play this. Just wow, overall. So thank you guys very much for watching this LP of Secret of Mana. And I am Tick Thomas Ark, and I'll see you later.